at the moment, the latest stats from Rewa, currently sitting at 300 and solid performer in a challenging market. Hi, Michael Keel here. Today I'm with our in-house economist, Ryan Bridie, and we're going to look at the latest RBA ABS and State Treasury Department figures. Ryan, over to you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, to start with, we look at the RBA cash rate. And on Tuesday, the RBA decided to leave the cash rate on hold at 1.5%. This was widely predicted, and it means that the cash rate hasn't increased since 2010. And if it remains on hold, which is likely through to 2020, that will mean 10 years without an increase in the cash rate. That'll be great news. Okay, as we've explained before, until we start to see real wages growth and the subsequent growth in inflation, we won't be seeing a rise in the cash rate. Next, we want to look at the June quarter GDP results. And GDP increased by 3.4% annually and 0.9% for the quarter. This was up from the 3.1% annual growth in the previous quarter and well above the 3% RBA forecast and the 2.8% predicted by most economists. The main driver was household consumption, which grew by 3%, and government investment, which grew by 5%. The increase in government investment wasn't really surprising considering the amount of infrastructure projects that are going on. But the increase in consumption was surprising. That's surprising because we've got such low wages growth, and on top of that, we're now starting to see a decline in property prices in the eastern states. The increase in consumption became even more surprising when we saw the July retail figures, which were very flat. Um, consumption is not tipped to continue at these levels, and we are expected to see a slowing in the growth of GDP. The increase in consumption, as we've explained before, is often being funded by increased levels in household debt, but also we're seeing a dramatic decrease in the levels of savings. Currently, Australians are saving 10% of what we used to save in 2008. Yep, so Ryan, with that, so clearly we're not saving and, um, and we're spending, is that right? And that's right, and in real terms, if we used to save $100 in 2008, we're saving $10 now. Yep. Next, we wanted to look at the WA June state final demand figures. And we could see that we had a 0.2% increase for the quarter, and we had a 1.3% increase annually. These are quite good numbers considering what we have had. We'll look at these figures in more detail next week, but I'd just like to quickly go to a graph which shows this is where we're at in the March quarter. And now if we go to the June quarter, we can see that that increase has continued. Now, Ryan, looking at the chart here, the, um, it, you know, if we continue to have this rapid rise, would it be fair to say that we may uh, take over or catch up to the rest of Australia and become the engine room of Australia again? Quite possibly, and the Treasury Department, their forecasts are for our growth to continue up to 3.25%. We would expect Australia's growth to taper a little bit. I would say eventually we'll overtake them. Yeah, fantastic. Next, we want to look at the, the WA Treasury July data relating to building approvals. And we reported a 9.4% increase in the three months leading up to June. In the three months leading up to July, we saw an 11.8% increase. So we're continually seeing an increase in building approvals at the moment. Yeah, and with that, Ryan, on the ground, uh, we've certainly noticed that development sites are getting snapped up. A lot of uh, developers are coming back into the market and uh, starting to build because they can see that things are starting to pick up. So that's a good sign for the real estate market. And we'll continue to monitor that by monitoring a three month average. Um, we don't want to use a single month average because it comes too erratic and be quite misleading. So each month we're going to add another three month uh, average to a graph and we'll be able to see what's happening. Now at the moment we can see that we've really ticked up on our building approvals. But what we want to see is, as we can see over the last two years, the majority has been below. We've had reduced growth. What we want to see as we go forward is most of the activity in this top section of the graph. Got it. Next we want to look at WA unemployment. And we created an extra 12,500 full-time jobs, but we lost 15,500 part-time jobs. Okay. This is not such a bad scenario. It's certainly better than being the other way around. The more full-time jobs we can create, the better it is for the real estate market. 
Yeah, and on that side of things as well, Ryan, we've noticed that there's a bit more activity from first home buyers. So maybe uh, more people uh, early on in their career now having full-time work are feeling more confident about going out and buying their first property. And look, we can see that our employment in WA grew by 2.2% in annual terms. And if we look at the next graph, we can see that again, we can see more positive indicators of what's happening in our economy. But what becomes really interesting is we can see here from our Treasury forecast that our, this is where we're sort of at at the moment with employment at 2.25. We should drop to 1.5, increase to 2, 2.25, 2.25. If we go back to our graph, we should be able to see us drop back down around here to about 1.5 and then increase back up to 2.25. So we'll be able to monitor this and see how accurate the Treasury forecasts are. Yeah, definitely. Now Ron, with these positive um, charts that we're looking at, uh, that all goes well for the real estate market, I take it? So. Definitely. And if we go back to the Treasury Department forecast, what I like to see is this population growth continue to increase over the coming years. That will really support our real estate market. Okay, so I guess the message is uh, now is a great time to buy. Uh, all the indicators show that WA is picking up, property prices are down. So take the opportunity, get into the market now. If you're thinking of buying or selling, feel free to contact the michaelkeel.com team on 1300 522 000. And now Ryan writes our weekly e-newsletter. And if you'd like to receive that, then email michael at michaelkeel.com and we'll add you to the mailing list. So thanks Ryan, that was a fantastic presentation. I hope you've enjoyed that and bye for now.